One of the biggest secrets to ripping long boards is to never have to do it. It's rare that we need boards that are six, eight feet long. A lot of times the best way to do a rip is by cross cutting it closer to the size you need. However, when the time comes I'm doing molding or, or longer rails and styles or something like that, I will mark along the board in two foot increments. So I've got my line marked on both faces of the board and I made a little hash mark at the two foot mark, the four foot mark, the six foot mark, and of course eight feet is at the end of the board. I know that I can rip 24 inches in about 45 seconds to a minute. I also know that when I get to 24 inches, I start to breathe a little bit heavier, my arms start to feel a little bit tired of continuous sawing for that long. So when I reach that two foot mark, I will flip the board over. There's my four foot mark. Now I'm gonna just flip the board in for end, not in for end, but just across the width, and I'm gonna work on the other side. Because I've got my line marked all the way around the board, I can look at my progress on this face and see, am I on the line? In other words, is my cut plumb? Gives me a second to kind of catch my breath, more importantly, let my arm rest, and then I will cut to the next two foot mark and flip the board again. Any inconsistencies you have in the plumb of the cut or even moving square along the face can be evened out just by flipping the board and working from the opposite face. Of course, in feet and out feet support is a big deal when working with a long board. If you look back behind me, you'll see a shot bit that was supporting the board when I was working down on the extreme end. Now that it's moving forward, it's working on a shop bend that actually the phone is resting on right now, which is probably why it's vibrating a little with every cut. There's my two foot mark. I'll flip the board again and continue to work down my line. The other thing, these two foot marks, it gives you something to shoot for. When you're working on an eight foot board, it seems like the longest rip in the world. But if all you're doing is working to that next two foot hash mark, it makes bite sizes that make the whole thing a heck of a lot easier. end of my cut, I'm going to flip it actually in for in now and start my cut all over again and work my way in. Because I don't have much to kneel on to hold the board down, things start to get a little rickety on me and starting to cut over on the opposite side can also even out any, well, unevenness in your cut. Now on a saw like this, that has the thumb hole rip notch, the tendency on a long rip is to want to use that, to allow you to go with the two-handed overhand grip. That's what it's there for and can really help when your arm starts to get tired after a long cut. Just beware this changes your body mechanics a little and invariably it will cause the saw to want to lean one way or the other. It may be different for each of us, just be aware that change in body mechanics will throw off a cut. And you may have to adjust for how that throws off your cut.